Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you help me and uh, can you see my screen? Okay, thank you. Okay, let's start now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this lab session. I'm Chen Zhan, and uh, this is my email address. Today, I will give you a tutorial about uh, the inode and the directory mappings. So let's begin. Uh, the goal of this tutorial is to help you understand assignment two. And uh, in the assignment two, you will be asked to do some exercise, some uh, paper-based exercise related to, to the inode and the directory. So firstly, let me give you a background of the inode. This is a typical data structure of the inode. And uh, uh, I've introduced this in the lab five. So uh, let's review this, this data structure now. You say uh, if in the inode, we have several parameters. Firstly, the inode number. This is the index of this inode. And uh, today we will focus on these two important data structure. Uh, the, these two important the parameter, the direct block and the indirect block. This direct block is the direct data block pointer, and uh, this indirect block is the indirect data block pointer. So today we focus on these two parameters. And in the assignment two, the question one is about uh, this function, the read, read function. And you can see we give you these four uh, parameters, the inode number, this is the uh, index of the inode which you read from and offset. This is the beginning position of the reading and the buffer. This is where you put the read results. And finally the count. This is, uh, this represents how many bytes you should be, uh, you should read. And uh, this is an example question, which is very similar to our homework. So if, if you uh, understand this question, I think it will be very easy for you to uh, finish the question one, okay? So uh, assume there is a file and uh, we have read this file into the memory. And you can see inside the inode, we have two direct pointer. The first pointer is five. The second pointer is nine. And then we, we have one indirect pointer 33. And I, after we read this indirect data block into the memory, it's like this one. You can see it's the data block 33. And we have uh, several cells. Okay, it's like this one. <clears throat> and then uh, there are two examples I will talk about today. Uh, the first example is read from the offset is 133, and we read 400 bytes. And the second example is read also beginning from the 133, but now we read 9,000 bytes. So the question why is you should write how many, um, the data block numbers in this, in this box. And uh, you should only list the data blocks that contain the failed data. So the metadata should not be contained in this box. So I will give you uh, two minutes to think about this question by yourself now. And after two minutes, I will talk about uh, how, to, how to solve this problem, okay? So now let's give you uh, two minutes. Uh, no, uh, today we only have a tutorial. We don't have a uh, lab assignment today.
Okay, uh, time is up. And uh, let me show you how to solve this question now. So before we talk about uh, how to solve this exactly, these two examples, first of me, uh, let me give you a uh, philosophy. So to so this question is about to determine the data block numbers which will be read. So if we can determine the first data block that will be read and the, the last data block that will be read, then between the first data block and the last data block, all the data block between these two data block are the data blocks that will be read. So this is the basic idea. So the first thing is determine the first data block to be read. So the most important parameter to determine this first data block is the offset. So by using the offset, we can use the following function to determine which data block will be read first. And uh, then we give a definition here. We let A equals offset divided by four kilobytes. And then we get the uh, floor of this. So you can say the X floor returns the integer part of A of the uh, floating point number X, for example. If you take the three dot two, then you can get three. And uh, you can say well, we only get the integer part. So no matter the, uh, the, the number after the, 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 the pointer is uh, nine or five, it will only get the integer part, which is three. So after this, we get A, then we can get the star position by this function. And if A is smaller than two, this means only the direct data block will be read. So we can directly get it from this function, direct block A. And if A is bigger or equal to two, then it means the first data block is not inside the direct data block, it's inside the indirect data block. So we get it from the cells. So we get it from the cell A minus two. Okay, so this, uh, this way, we get the first, first data block to be read. Then the second thing is to get the last data block to be read. So it's very similar. So we, we assume A prime equals offset plus the count minus one, and then divided by four kilobytes. So you may, uh, you may ask a question when we minus one here. So I also uh, give you the reason now. So let's assume the data block size is 10 bytes and then we read the 10 bytes from the offset zero. So what will happen? If we don't minus one, then A equals A uh, zero and the A prime equals uh, zero plus one divided by uh, plus 10 divided by 10 then it is one. Then we will start from the direct block zero and uh, end, end at the direct block one. So we will read zero and one, these two direct data blocks. But however, you can say we only read 10 bytes. So actually we should only read the direct block zero. So in this way, we will get a wrong answer. So if we, minus one here, then the A prime equals zero plus 10 minus one divided by 10, then it's still zero. So only direct block zero will be, be read. So this is correct. So this minus one is to, to avoid this uh, boundary conditions, okay? So after we get this A, A minus A prime, we can determine the end position just like this way. It's it's exactly the same as the uh, star position function. You can say we get, uh, if A prime is smaller than two, then we can get the last step block as the direct block A prime. If A prime is bigger or equal to two, it means the end position is at the indirect block. So we get it from this cell, okay? So after that, we can 
we get the first cell block and the last cell block, then all the data block between these two data block will be read. So let's let then that let's see the two examples. The example one is read from 133 and the read the 400 bytes. So firstly, let's calculate the A. A equals 133 divided by four kilobytes. So because you can say it's uh is smaller than one, so it's the integer part is zero. So zero is smaller than two. So we know that you start from the direct data block and the exactly the direct block zero. So you can say it's here, the direct block zero is five. And then we, we calculate the A prime to de determine the last data block. A prime equals 133 plus 400, this one, and the minus one divided by four kilobytes is still smaller than one. So we get a flow and uh, is zero. So because A prime is still smaller than two, then it's also end as the direct block zero, which is five. So this reading will start from direct block five, uh, direct flow that direct block zero, which is five, and end at the direct block zero, which is also five. So only direct, only the data block five will be read. So the answer is five. And then the second example is read from the uh, 133, and uh, now we, eight, we read uh, 9,000 bytes. So the A is the, A is also, is still zero because uh, 133 divided by four kilobytes is still zero. And uh, so we start from the direct block zero, which is five. And then the A prime equals 133 plus 9,000 minus one and divided by four kilobytes and the get the flow is still, is two now. So because two is bigger or equal to two, so we know that it's not inside the direct data block, but inside the indirect data block. So we get it from the cell two minus two, which is zero. So is we know that it ends at the cell zero, which is uh, 34. So the reading from, begin from the, uh, direct block zero, which is five, and end at the cell zero, which is 34. So the answer is five, nine, and 34. I know that the indirect data block, this one, 33, should not be included in the answer. Why? This is because the 33 is, is actually is this one. It's the, it contains the cells, the metadata, not the failed data. So it should, Actually, we don't read from it. It don't contain that fair data. So the, the answer is five, nine, and 34. The 33 don't contain the fair data. It contain the metadata of the cells. Okay. So this is the uh, question one. So I think after these two examples, it will be very easy for you to uh, answer the question one. Then the second question, uh, Let's talk about the second question. The second question is about the directory. So also let me first give you a brief introduction to the directory, the background. And for our simple file system, the directory is also a, a, a file, but it's a special file. So it also contains the inode and data blocks, but the difference is that inside our directory, the data blocks, they don't store the file data but uh, instead they store a list of special metadata, which is called the directory mappings. So the mapping is uh, uh, a tuple of the file name and the inode number. So you can say this is the data structure of directory mapping. And uh, you can say it's a tuple from, of the file name. File name is a char sequence and uh, most uh, have 20 bytes. Uh, 20 characters. And uh, then we have uh, I know number. So by using the directory mapping data structure, we can maintain the mapping from the file name to the I know number. So this is the basic idea of the directory and the mappings. 
And then uh, how to traverse a directory is that uh, for each directory file, we at least contain two mapping items, the dot and double dot. The dot, the dot, the single dot represent the directory itself and double dot represent its parent directory. And for the root directory uh, is special because the root directory, it don't have a parent. So the double dot is itself. And when we are looking for a special directory on the, on the spe specific file on the directory, we will traverse the directory mappings one by one and compare the file name with the directory mappings file name. And once the file name equals the file name, the corresponding error number will be returned. And then uh, I will give you a simple example here. So today, uh, in today's tutorial, we will use this, this directory as an example. So you can say it's a very simple. We have a root directory here. And under the root directory, we have two subdirectory, one and two. And uh, inside the directory one, it contain a file, file one. And the other number of the root directory is zero. And for direct one is one, for two is two, for file one is three. And each directory file contain a one data block, which is four kilobytes. And the data block number allocated to this directory are zero, one, two, respectively. So uh, let's see what is inside the root directory now. So you can see for the root directory, at least for, for each directory, at least it has, uh, has these two uh, items, the dot and double dot to represent itself and its parent. So because it's the root directory, so dot is zero and the double dot is also zero. And then you'd have two children Direct one and direct two. And so we should include these two subdirectory here. And then we should write its idle number here. And the ref to this, this part, we know that the idle number of directory one is one, and for direct two is two. So the final answer is like this way. So for the root directory, its, it's data block is contains these four items, dot, zero, double dot, zero, direct one, one, direct two, two, two. Okay, so you can see it's, where, uh, it's simple. And then uh, let's see the direct one. So inside direct one, at least, uh, yeah, basically you should, uh, for every directory, at least uh, you have these two part the dot and double dot. So for direct one, dot is itself. So we know that the inner number of direct one is one and double dot is its parent. So for the root directory is zero. And then we, we observe this, this structure. We know that for direct one, it contain one fail, fail one. So we should write fail one here. And is the fail one, we read to the, uh, to this part, we know that for fail one is I know is three. So we write the I number three here. So finally we get these three items for direct one. And then finally, uh, which uh, for the second question, we have a path traversing pr problem. So if we traverse from the root direct directory to a specific file, so we give you a absolute pass, direct one, fail one, and uh, you should write down the idle number and the data block sequence like this way. So let's see how to write this sequence. So firstly, we should go to the idle, the root directory, this one. And uh, so we get inside the inode zero. And from the idle zero, we know that it's been, its data block is zero. So we go inside the data block zero of the root directory and we can get these four 
these four items, and we traverse these four items, and say compare the directory one with these four entries. So directory one don't equal dot, so go to legs. Double dot doesn't equal directory one, so go to legs. So directory one equal directory one, so it's one. So we return one here. So we know that I know number one is the direct one. So we write I know one here. And then inside I know one, we get is data block, is data block one. And inside data block one, we have these three items. So we, we want to find the fail one. So we compare fail one with three, these three items. So fail one doesn't equal dot, fail one doesn't equal double dot, fail one equals fail one. So finally we return the three here. So finally we go to I know three and uh, then we get the final fail one here. So this is the sequence uh, when we're traversing the, the directory structure. Okay, so that's all of today's tutorial. I think uh, after this two, examples it will be very easy for you to answer the questions in exam two. Okay, thank you. If you have any question, you can ask me now. If not, uh, you can you are free to leave now. Uh, yeah, you are welcome. Uh, one in direct one and fail one L number is three. Is it set by L OS? Yes. Uh, this is set by is set by the OS. You don't need to know why it's three. You can say we set it here. So we set the uh I know three is for fail one. Yeah. And for the simple file system for the project, you also don't need to uh no why is three because we have properly set it here the other number will not seem with other yes the other number is will not be same for every for every file is have is uh distinct uh, i node will not have the same i node number Okay. Uh, okay. Bye bye. See you.